After years of delays and controversy, the California High Speed Rail Authority has finally released a long-awaited document concerning the Los Angeles-Anaheim section. On paper, this is seen as a crucial milestone potentially determining the future of the entire Phase 1 San Francisco-Southern California line. But behind the official statements and familiar technical language, the document raises more questions than it answers. Does it truly mark a turning point for the project, or is it simply a procedural development? In today's episode of On the Trains, we'll dissect what's going on behind this update. We first need to look at what the LA Anaheim segment actually is. Overview. The approximately 30-mile Los Angeles-Anaheim section is the southernmost segment of Phase 1 of the California High-Speed Rail System, connecting Union Station with the Anaheim Area Intermodal Transportation Center. It is the only section of the San Francisco-Los angeles Deer anaheim corridor that has not yet completed environmental approval, meaning the nearly 500-mile Phase 1 corridor cannot be legally closed without it. The line passes through densely developed cities such as Los Angeles Commerce, Norwalk, Buena Park, Fullerton, and Anaheim, where land is constrained and railroad crossings are frequent. As a result, LA Anaheim is not just another rail segment. It represents one of the most complex infrastructure integration challenges in the entire project, requiring high-speed rail to coexist within an already saturated urban rail environment. In that context, what's new in this long-awaited update? Let's move on to the next part. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more important information about the world of rail. Latest update. On December 5, 2025, the California High Speed Rail Authority released the draft environmental impact statement for the Los Angeles Anaheim section. This document fulfills both California's CEQA and the federal NEPA requirements and represents the second to last step in the environmental approval process. The draft EIS does not authorize construction or commit funding. Instead, it evaluates project alternatives, including a legally required no build option analyzes environmental and community impacts and outlines potential mitigation measures. Its purpose is procedural to disclose impacts, collect public and agency feedback, and establish a formal record that must be addressed before a final EIS and record of decision can be issued. Only after that process is complete does the project gain legal clearance to move forward with detailed design land acquisition financing decisions and construction preparation without guaranteeing that those steps will actually happen. Alongside the document's release, CHSRA opened a formal public comment period running from December 5, 2025 through February 3, 2026. During this window, residents, local governments, advocacy groups, businesses, and transportation agencies can review the draft, attend public workshops and hearings both in person and online, and submit formal comments. By law, every substantive comment must be reviewed and responded to in the final EIS before any final environmental decision can be made. This stage is politically and socially sensitive. The Los Angeles-Anaheim Corridor cuts through some of the most densely developed and infrastructure-constrained cities in Southern California, and decisions made during this review will shape not just rail operations but land use neighborhood impacts and regional mobility for decades to come. On paper, the release of the draft EIS is a major milestone. It moves the project closer to completing environmental clearance for the entire Phase 1 corridor. But environmental progress alone does not resolve the deeper questions surrounding this segment. Because completing an environmental review does not answer the most important question of all, how and whether this line will actually be built, the core problem. The central problem facing the Los Angeles-Anaheim segment is not environmental approval, but functional reality. Even if the project clears every remaining procedural hurdle, this corridor will operate very differently from what most people associate with high-speed rail. Unlike the Central Valley sections designed for sustained speeds of up to 220 miles per hour, the L.A. Anaheim segment is constrained by its urban setting shared right-of-way geometry and the need to fit within an already saturated rail corridor. The route runs through some of the most densely developed parts of Southern California where curves are tighter, straight sections are shorter stations are closely spaced, and opportunities for full-grade separation are limited. These physical constraints place firm caps on achievable operating speeds regardless of train technology or signaling improvements. While high-speed trains on this segment will use dedicated passenger tracks and will not share running infrastructure with freight services, the corridor's proximity to Metrolink Amtrak intercity trains and adjacent freight operations 
introduces additional operational complexity. Dispatching flexibility maintenance windows and timetable recovery margins are all more limited here than on purpose-built high-speed alignments. As a result, the Los Angeles-Anaheim segment is expected to function more like a heavily upgraded intercity rail corridor than a true high-speed line. It will be among the slowest and most operationally constrained portions of the entire Phase 1 system, even though it serves the most populous and politically critical markets. This creates a structural imbalance at the heart of California high-speed rail. The fastest trains will run through the least populated areas while the segment that delivers riders into the Los Angeles Basin will be the most constrained. And that imbalance raises a deeper question not about whether the project can pass review, but whether its southern gateway can deliver the performance reliability and public credibility needed to justify the scale of investment planned for the rest of the system. These constraints are reflected directly in the technical options evaluated in the draft EIS. Technical Details and Proposed Improvements the draft EIS evaluates three main scenarios for the Los Angeles-Anaheim section, including a no-build option and two high-speed rail-only, passenger-only options. The no-construction option is included to meet legal requirements and assumes the high-speed rail line will not be built and traffic and environmental conditions will continue as they are. This option is not intended as a practical choice, but serves as a basis for comparison to assess the impact of the construction options. Both construction options assume the Los Angeles-Anaheim line will operate independent passenger high-speed trains not sharing infrastructure with freight trains to ensure safety and operational efficiency with the core difference lying in the location of the light maintenance facility. Option A, selected as the preferred option, proposes locating the LMF in the 26th Street area and is assessed to have clear advantages in terms of accessibility to the main line compatibility with existing land use planning and minimizing impact on residential and business areas while optimizing operations by shortening empty run times and improving maintenance efficiency. Conversely, option B with the LMF in the 15th Street area while still fully analyzed according to legal requirements is not recommended due to greater land use conflicts, potentially greater negative impacts on surrounding communities and less efficient long-term operation. Notably, the draft EIS also considers the possibility of constructing intermediate stations at Norwalk, Santa Fe Springs, and Fullerton. Although not among the preferred options for the initial phase, including these options in the analysis shows that CHSRA has seriously considered regional connectivity needs and proposals from local authorities, while acknowledging that adding intermediate stations in the initial operation phase could reduce average speed, extend travel time, and increase operating costs making them unsuitable for full-line operation at present. Technically, the report proposes a range of infrastructure improvement solutions, including leveraging and upgrading existing rail corridors to reduce environmental impact and limit new land acquisition, constructing level crossing separation structures at railroad intersections to enhance safety and reduce traffic congestion, implementing advanced safety systems such as positive train control, automated operational monitoring systems, and integrated earthquake early warning as well as designing the entire infrastructure to rigorous earthquake resistance standards suitable for the complex geological conditions of Southern California. Those design choices in turn shape the impacts this project would have on surrounding communities, impacts and challenges. The draft EIS dedicates a significant portion to analyzing the project's operational, social and economic environments, as well as corresponding mitigation solutions. Areas assessed include land use, noise and vibration, air quality traffic, ecological resources, urban landscape and social equity. Because the route passes through many densely populated urban areas, one of the biggest challenges is minimizing the impact on local communities, particularly during the construction phase. The report proposes solutions such as limiting construction time using temporary noise barriers, controlling dust and emissions and coordinating closely with local authorities to reduce traffic congestion. In the long term, the project is expected to deliver numerous strategic benefits, including reduced reliance on private vehicles, reduced greenhouse gas emissions, improved access to jobs and services, and the promotion of transitional development along the corridor. However, the report also acknowledges that these benefits can only be achieved if the project is developed in a coordinated, timely manner and integrated with local urban planning, the architectural design phase which runs until March 2, 2026, 
is considered the final basis for the community and stakeholders to determine the final form of the project. After synthesizing and responding to these comments in the final, EISC HSRA will proceed to the final environmental decision paving the way for the next steps in realizing the high-speed rail line in Southern California. The release of the draft EIS for the Los Angeles-Anaheim section is an important procedural achievement. It completes the environmental framework for Phase 1 and demonstrates continued institutional momentum. Yet, in practical terms, it changes little about the project's immediate reality. The segment will not operate at true high speeds, lacks committed funding, and faces exceptional urban and political challenges. As such, this milestone represents legal progress, but not physical progress. As public review continues and final approvals approach, the true test will be whether political will and financial commitment emerge to move beyond paperwork and deliver a functioning rail line. Until then, LA Anaheim stands as the clearest example of California high-speed rail's central dilemma, steady movement through process with an uncertain path to delivery. That's all for today. Enjoy the holidays, Merry Christmas, and best wishes for a great new year. See you next video.